it is Tuesday night, and after a week off, uh, Wes and I are back for another episode of Goal Horns and Fight Songs. Last week was a little bit challenging for both of us, and I'm I'm just going to throw it out there for anybody who stumbles across this. Uh, we did lose one of our co-stars uh, as uh, he has been seen in a few episodes popping his head up. Uh, Briz, unfortunately, <clears throat> did pass away, so I was dealing with that. And then Wes had some other things, but just wanted to shout out to Briz, uh, the movie star that he was, or at least he thought he was. Uh, and that's why we missed last week, but we're back again this week with uh, something more to talk about. Yeah, I had a sick baby last week. She was oh so thrilled. I can imagine. How how many shirts did you uh have to wash up from throw up? Uh all of them. No, actually I think she only threw up <laughs> once last the last time she was sick. This last time she was sick. The first time well, she was sick good. it was a bunch of them, so Well, at least the the number is uh going down. Yeah, we're at the we're at the wait it out and hope they get through it phase of parenting because there's not much you can do for a baby under six months as far as medical intervention goes. This is true. Not that I know from experience, but no, but I believe it. So you know, quick, uh, be a light-hearted show. No real NCHC news. Plus, we're not going to be here next week for the Fourth of July holiday. Not that there'll be too many fireworks going off. Hopefully, as it's a Tuesday night, Fourth of July, but. I'd still rather not have to fight with the sounds of a war zone outside as we're trying to, to get this done. So we'll just skip next week and jump back into it on the 11th. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. And I'll be driving back from uh, from up north, which it's weird saying up north but because that's where I'm from. But um, yeah, I'll be driving back and don't know what time I'll actually get back on the 4th. Uh, I guess first thing we could do, though, since it was the last episode, I don't think we've talked about any of the champions yet, but 11 former NCHC players hoisting trophies like across the, the three big leagues of professional hockey in the ECHL, AHL, and NHL. So congrats to all the, the guys who were part of those teams. Yeah, and... I think I, I didn't watch, I don't know if you did, but I don't think either of us watched the ECHL, but we did watch the uh, AHL Game 7, Coachella Valley versus the versus the Hershey Bears, and first time since 1950, was it 52, that Game 7 went into overtime, uh, and friend of the show, Ethan Frank, got an assist on the game-winning goal with about, I don't know, three some, three and change left in the in the first overtime. Yeah, he really made up for taking that penalty early in the in the overtime period. <laughs> that was a bad one. I mean, it, it uh, happens, but uh, he, he came back and got the assist on the game-winning goal and, and played well for the most part throughout the whole game, so... Big part of that team. I mean, really, I don't think there was any bigger part on that team, though, than Hunter Shepard playing extremely well in the crease at that entire series. Um, yeah, the only game I got to see was Game 7, but I was following along with the other games and even really all playoffs along. Like, he stepped up when he had to after a, a troublesome game and came back and, and got his team wins when they needed him and really fought his way to that, that finals and was named the MVP of the playoffs, as, and it well-deserved. Yeah, I think it was well deserved too, and that that was the only game that I saw. But how he played, um, I missed. I think most of the first period, I might have caught the last little bit of the first. But he just kept the team in it, and he he gave them a chance to win, and that's what he does. He steps up in big games. That that's what he's done his whole career. So, for all the Washington Capitals fans. You have uh, at least a couple of good prospects to look forward to in the coming years with Hunter Shepard and Ethan Frank. Yeah, I mean, Ethan's play this year earned him a, uh, a look next year with a two-way contract. 
uh, that he signed midway through the year and really just an incredible first full pro year for Ethan across the whole season. Like he really stepped up his game and showed that he belongs there and earned himself a look at the next level. So we'll see what his future holds. And if he makes the team and there's a Capitals jersey with his name on it, it'll end up in my closet at some point in the season. And I, I feel like there's, he's got to be on that short list of players for if somebody goes down with injury or they just need a change, he, he has to be on that short list to, to pull up. Um, obviously if it's a defenseman, probably not going to pull him up, but any forward, uh, I think, I think he'll get a look. Yeah. And should definitely get a look out, out of camp. Um, the way he's been able to adjust to every level and, and just continue to develop into a great forward and, and the kids got wheels for days. Yeah, that that's been proven time and time again. Like game seven, I don't, I don't know how many times he just broke away from everybody and then or chase the somebody down. Yeah, and then set the record for fastest skater at the the All Star competition this year for the AHL, which would have I think we brought it up. It would have beaten the NHL record as well. Yeah. So. Kid's got wheels, he's got hands, not afraid to do the work. Uh, so, looking forward to see what he can do next year and at the next level once he gets his, once he gets his shot. Yep, 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 yep. That'd be good. Uh, and then, you know, a couple other guys from the, uh, on that team were Shane, Ger Shane Gersich from UND. I think he has now a national title to his name a Stanley Cup championship to his name and the uh, AHL trophy, the Calder trophy. It was either him or Calder. was it him? I'm pretty sure it was Shane that they mentioned that for. Well, let me double check. Do, do, do. Yeah, he's with the Capitals. When they won it in 18, uh, part of the, the championship team of North Dakota. What was that? 20. When did they win there? 16? 16. I want to say it was 16. I think so. I think Denver was 18 and Duluth yeah. was 19 and 20. No. No, because 20, 20. Den Denver was, was 17. And UMD was 18, 19. 19. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. I can never remember which year's the COVID year. It, it's twenty twenty is the COVID year. Yes. So you got to count backwards from there. Duluth had it twice back to back. Then, then Denver, then North Dakota for going backwards. So yeah, he had the national title in twenty sixteen with North Dakota, the Stanley Cup championship in eighteen with the Capitals, and this year, the Calder Cup with the Bears. So just picking up trophies. All he does is he's like Patty Maroon. All he does is win. Yeah, yeah, Maroon's so good. And the dude who came from, you know, who almost thought he blew his NHL career, goes and plays roller hockey, wins like a national title in roller hockey, somehow manages to fight his way back to the NHL and is a three-time Stanley Cup champion. Yeah. Like, just an absolute unit of a human being, too. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, but anyway, back to the NCH scene, what we're, we're here to talk about. We're going to have a little fun with this one. We're going to compare the NCHC teams to the uh, NHL playoff teams through the NCHC finals. We're going to not deal with the national tournament just because it's, it's always a little extra thing and it's so hard to... It's just its own thing, and it doesn't really fit in with the college hockey season, which is why it's weird that they just lump it all together and regular season records or goal counts continue to accumulate throughout the tournament. Mm -hmm. um, even though that benefited both top goal scorers in the country this year, like it's just a weird thing that it continues to count. But uh, so I don't know if you made your selections. I did. All right. Let's just. And I think all but one are different than yours. 
Well, I, uh, I don't know what ch I, I don't know what changes you made, but I made some shuffles. Some made a little bit more sense when I actually looked at why I was making those comparisons. Um, but I think it'll still be fun. So, do you want to just run through? Do we want to go from championship down? Do we want to go alphabetically? I think I mean mine is just <clears throat> a random order, but I can figure out. So we could do alphabetically. Uh, that's what we normally do, so might as well. All right, so we'll start out with the Colorado College Tigers. This one seems pretty obvious when you really look at it, uh, but I, I think they most compared to the Florida Panthers this year. Uh, both teams, lower seeds in the tournament, who had to fight through, you know, the one and two seeds uh, to get to that championship game, both failing to hoist the the big prize at the end of it, but maybe surprise some teams. Uh, played extremely well, had a goaltender who who was able to steal some games and show up in big spots, have, you know, talented guys who who showed up at the right times and got those clutch goals to, to win when they needed to and, and get the Tigers to the NCHC Finals this year. And for me, I, I might have done it a little differently than you. Part of it might not have been quite understanding the assignment, but I compared them <laughs> to the new the New York Islanders. And yes, the Islanders do have a very good goalie in Sorokin. He was up for the Vesna last last night. Um, did not win it. Uh, and they have some talent, but it's just been so long since they've had success. And they're they're kind of there. They might get a playoff series win here or there, but they're they're more that bottom rung. They like if they get out of the first round, great. Um but they're they just seem like a team that's happy to make the playoffs. Which in the NCHC of course everyone does, but that that's how I compare them. They're just kind of more that bottom rung, but they have that opportunity and that potential to win a playoff series. It's just more likely to not happen than it is. And staying in Colorado, we have the Denver Pioneers, uh, who were the number one seed going into the tournament. I associated them with another number one seed, that being the Boston Bruins, who were, you know, maybe a little bit shocked by the Florida Panthers, much like the Denver Pioneers were by the CC Tigers in the second round of the playoffs this year. Um, in the semifinals, again, it, it you know it's a team that I think a lot of people were kind of expecting to, if not win the NCHC tournament, to at least make the finals, uh, knowing who they were supposed to, who they were playing, and what the path was going to be for them. They did take care of Miami in the first round, uh, pretty handedly, but again struggled with Colorado College, who had, who they had manhandled for the better part of a few years now and it was like I think Colorado College's first win in the last eight games against Denver uh, them getting past them to get to the the finals this year and a little bit shocking much like what we saw with the Boston Bruins and just a uh, maybe not so much the collapse the same level of collapse but I think it was similar in those two teams you could see a little bit of a comparison there yeah and that that's the one that I knew that we were going to have the same that I don't think there's any way that you can't compare Denver to Boston, um, especially with what they did this year. Boston was far and away the best regular season team. Denver was that this year. I mean, they, they just seem like that this year, uh, especially early on in the season. Disappointment come playoff time but it, I mean it's pretty self-explanatory Denver Boston great teams both regular season playoffs disappointment there, there's not much else to say for for me on there uh, next up is, we go all the way to the easternmost team with Miami University I have them compared to the old Winnipeg Jets they That's right. I, I did have that one the same, and that kind of 
it made sense. They make they they get to the playoffs. I mean Miami because every team makes the playoffs. But it just seems like every time they make it there, they struggle harder than they did during the regular season. And maybe it's because they have to play a top team every year. But Winnipeg was also the only team to be swept in this year's playoffs. Uh, so that's the comparison there. It's they get their participation trophy and move on. And that's, I don't think there was anybody in the hockey world that thought Winnipeg even stood a chance. I don't even know who they played in the first round. Um, but it, it, yeah, it's like, thanks for coming, move on. But now with the moves, you could make the argument that UMD is Winnipeg with the, the trades that have followed. Winnipeg uh, played that came out today. Ve- uh, Vegas. Okay, well, at least they lost to the champs. But yeah, Winnipeg now, because uh, Ayafalo is going to be there, and Pionk is there. Uh, who else did I see? There's someone else, and then if they resign, ah, uh, shoot, his name starts with an S. But basically, they could have four Bulldogs, and they're trying to be the Ottawa Senators just with UMD players instead of North Dakota players. Yeah, no, you mentioned that earlier. I'm just looking to find my previous sheet uh, to kind of compare and see where I made the most difference. All right, here we go. Uh, That was Miami. Next is Minnesota Duluth. This one I changed. I originally had Dallas, and then I thought about it a little more. And I think it's actually more, they're more equatable to the Wild. Uh, You know, the only team that's sticking with the same state here. But I think they may not necessarily have had all of the expectations um, of making it super far in the playoffs, but you know there's always a chance. They faced a, a familiar foe in St. Cloud, and um, Minnesota did with Dallas. And there there were parts of the game where it felt like, you know, Duluth could have done a little something more than they did. There were times where it felt like the Wild were going to make a little more noise than they did. And at the end, both teams kind of fell short of really making that step that I think a lot of people were hoping they were going to make. Uh, the other reason is also UMD used a little bit more of a goalie tandem, similar to the way the Wild did. And it, it didn't necessarily work out great for them. And there there was a lot of question. I think there were some question marks in the back end of who was going to be the consistent starter for both teams uh, in the playoffs and throughout most of the season. So th- that, that's why I picked, uh, I switched Duluth to the wild and uh, put someone else with the stars. And so this is, this is where I kind of maybe not knowing the assignment, whatever. I, I went for more historical aspect in comparing the teams and I compared UMD to Tampa because not for their style of play, but the more recent success. And then Tampa did have some high expectations, but the drop off this year, as far as how they, how well they did in the playoffs. And that's, as I was looking through the teams, that's how I was thinking about it was, okay, who's had the most recent success but who had the most drop-off during the playoffs. And so I I went with Tampa for UMD because you had the back-to-back national championships. You probably could have had a three-peat. And then the last couple years with Colorado winning it last year, um, and then Tampa not having the – living up to the expectations that they did this year – that that was my comparison, but I, I see your your reasoning too with how you did it, where I didn't have a whole lot of expectations. If we got out of the first round, great, but I didn't I didn't think that we were gonna beat St. Cloud. Yeah. Now I mean I can definitely see the Tampa thing too. I, I just started looking more at like I, who can I really compare each player to? I can compare the goalie situation a little bit closer. 
you know, some young guys stepped up, like uh, Dominic James stepped up for uh, Minnesota Duluth again. Uh, maybe you could kind of say he disappeared in the playoffs, much like Kaprizov did for the Wild. Uh, may not have necessarily performed the way you wanted him to, but it just seemed like a more of a fit if we were looking at just the playoff picture from this year, which I think originally we were going to do a little bit differently, and I forgot to tell you the changes that we made, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. Because then it, I, it makes it makes it more interesting the way I did it versus the way you did it. Because then, well, then I changed my shit again before we started recording anyway, so. I was just making all kinds of changes over here. Uh, next, if I know my alphabet, is Nebraska Omaha. And I put them as the LA Kings. Uh, you know, not really a whole lot of noise made. Um, they played North Dakota. North Dakota upset them a little bit. I think much like the Oilers may have upset LA. Uh, LA made a goalie change in the middle of the year. It looked like Nebraska Omaha was starting to do a similar thing, switching more to um, what's his name? The cozy. Uh, yeah. In that and, and going along with him. Uh, and once again, I, I don't know that anyone really had, expectations of and there might have been slightly more expectations of Omaha to get out of the first round finally uh but it just didn't happen and, and uh Dan in the chat says yeah he'd put them as the Leafs because they can't make it out of the first round of the playoffs I did make the Toronto Maple Leafs a team we'll get there when we get there but uh I did relate them to somebody and Toronto did make it out of the first round this year yeah the wild it, Dan the wild I will admit that we can't make it out of the first round. Uh, UNO, who you got? I have them, and the way that I did it, I have them as Florida because you never know. They're they're kind of a gritty, hard-working team, but you never know what you're going to get. And with UNO, we, we talk about it all the time. You don't know which team you're going to get, if they're going to win the game or they're going to lose the game. And if they got get on a hot streak, then they can get on a roll. They just never have done it, but that's why I <clears> put them as Florida. They're, they're always kind of like the, uh, yeah, they got in. Let's see what they can do. Um, the, Florida just kind of had that Cinderella slipper on them for, for a long time. And that, that was my reasoning for that is Florida was gritty. They can compete in every game. Florida just happened to win a lot more games than Omaha did. Yeah. Uh, next up is North Dakota. I changed here too. I originally had the Oilers and then I realized that there wasn't really a single player who stood out on North Dakota the way that a Connor McDavid does or a line that really stood out like the Connor McDavid dry tandem when they're together. Uh, it was really a down year for North Dakota production-wise. Uh, I ended up switching them to the Dallas Stars. They, they both make it through the first round. Uh, you know, North Dakota upsets, upsets. Uh, Nebraska Omaha to make it through and and fall to uh, Saint Cloud in the in the semis. They have a deep, you know, they they had a goaltender come in and. and perform moderately well if he got lit up he got lit up kind of like Ottinger did a few times uh there wasn't a real a whole bunch of consistency to the North Dakota team and there really wasn't a lot to Dallas either aside from their power play but they also took some silly penalties and I think you could say that was kind of a downfall to North Dakota this year was they took some really bad penalties in really bad spots and I think it really kind of cost them a, a, quite a few games in the regular season and definitely cost them in the playoffs. And I have North Dakota as Carolina. Um, especially more recently, there's always the hype around the team. Uh, Carolina, they probably the last five years or so, they've been a really hyped up team. They're going to be good. 
North Dakota every year. They're they're hyped up. It's North Dakota. They're going to be good. Um, Carolina did prove better in the playoffs this year than North Dakota did in in a sense, but just the letdown factor that they've had in in the last few years where we're going to be good, we're going to be good and just not getting getting things done. Yeah, they both moved on past the first round, but both teams feel like the hype factor is more than the product that they're producing on the ice. And so that's that's why I put North Dakota and Carolina together because it the expectations are so high every year, especially recently, and they just don't deliver on those expectations. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a good comparison to you. Um, and then we got the last two here with St. Cloud first. Again, this one was a pretty obvious comparison. I compared champs with champs. Uh, compared him to the VGK Knights, or VGK Knights, Knights. Good job. That's like saying ATM machine, which is freaking real smart over here. Um, but they had a tan, uh, you know, they had goalie issues. I mean, St. Cloud didn't really have goalie issues, but they had a tandem that was rocking all season long, and it didn't really seem to matter who was in net. They were finding ways to win games. Uh, Vegas went through five goaltenders in the playoffs, and no matter really who was in net, they they found a way to to win a game and, and outperform the other side. They had experienced players who showed up. Um, Okabe, you know, with that that overtime goal, I think to to win the game against North Dakota because I think they they kind of pulled away a little bit on uh, Colorado there. Yeah. In the, in the finals, but I'm pretty sure the semifinal game was an OT game between St. Cloud and North Dakota. But they just had the, the right guys show up in the right times, and, and you can make comparisons to players and who played well and, and how well they played. But they really seem to be similar to the, the Vegas team, and just no matter what obstacle was thrown in front of them, they were finding a way to overcome it, and it was their their trophy to win there. For me, yes, they did. Um, they won the NCHC tournament, but overall, I I compare them to the Oilers, uh, because they've had the talent, and and I I was also going further than just the NCHC um tournament, but. They have the talent. The talent is there. They had the top lines, and I don't know why I can't think of his name right now, but the kid that was a two-time transfer uh, that was one of the leaders on St. Cloud's team. Uh, Berkshank. Yes. Former Tiger, former Gopher. Uh, yep. And they have the talent. They always feel like they're right there but they just can't quite get over the hump. And that's how Edmonton feels right now to me is they have all this talent, but they just, I mean, they're, they're so close and, and they could, just can't quite get over that hump. You could almost say the same thing comparing them. To, if we we're sticking with just the NCHC playoffs, I mean, that's another reason to compare them to VGK though. Cause there was a team mm -hmm. that, you know, they'd get so close the their very first year. They make the, the final, the, Stanley Cup Finals, they, they don't get there. Or they don't bring it home. They they stumble a little bit. They get super close a few more times, a couple more times. Can't get it done. This year, they, they finally get it done. Uh, and, and it felt similar to what we were seeing with St. Cloud the last few years. Just we're right there every time. You know, stumbled at the end a little bit. Uh, whether it was not making it out of the first round or not making it to the finals or losing in the finals, whatever it was. But they... they did it this year and took home their, I think their second frozen face-off championship. I, I believe it was their second. But then the other thing too is they're Edmonton isn't running away with the Pacific division. St. Cloud hasn't been running away. They, they've been the last two years, they've been the four seed. So they're, they're very similar in that where, where they sit in the playoffs and you have some expectations, you know they're a very good team. It's just what will they do? And they usually, 
I would I would say probably just live up to expectations in the sense that you don't think they're going to go all the way, but you don't think they're going to get bounced in the first round. They probably will make the championship, but they just don't have that one extra game in them. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a fair comparison for sure. Last but now, not last but not least, this one might anger some people on on my side of the 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 wall there. Um, I kind of left a little teaser there saying I did relate the Mon- um, Toronto Maple Leafs to somebody, and there's only one team left to talk about, and that's Western Michigan. And I said they were the Toronto Maple Leafs of this year's playoffs. Yes, the Maple Leafs did finally make it to the second round. Uh, Western did not make it to the second round. But Western had that top line that was good all year long. Um, you know, that, that top line of Sass and uh, McAllister and Poland. They got decent goalie play from Rowe, but just couldn't put it together, much like the Toronto Maple Leafs seem to not be able to do in the playoffs. They got that top line, or, you know, those those top line, top players in Matthews, Marner, uh, Tavares, Ryan O'Reilly. Um, you know, there, there's big names, and I think Western had some players who made themselves big name guys. But for whatever reason, when the lights were on, it was they stumbled through and they did not play how we were used to seeing them play the rest, the most of the season, and liked a lot more like some Maple Leafs than they did a really good Bronco team, uh, and that is my comparison. And I mentioned it earlier, Western Michigan, I compared them to the Wild. They're a team, yeah, get out of the first round, maybe, but like like you were saying, our stars went away. And um, style-wise, that this is probably the closest where it's more of a gritty style other than the top line uh, for Western. We were trying to play a more gritty style of hockey. And to me, there's now I'll cheer for Western, and I I want them to do well unless they're playing UMD, but I just don't have high expectations for them. Just kind of like I don't have high expectations for the Wild. And Kaprizov could score 80 goals. Great. What's he going to do in the playoffs? He was playing hurt this year, but Bellino went away. The whole, basically the whole year. Hartman didn't do anything. Like, Freddie Goudreau was one of our best players who he hadn't done anything. So I compare the Broncos to the wild just with how they play this year. Cause they had a really good season second year with over a hundred points. Well, what did that get you? Nothing. A first round exit. Just, just like the, the top line for the Broncos. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a slightly disappointing playoffs for sure um and really into that ncaa tournament not great but i mean there's still we'll see what happens this year we lost some more some more guys um maybe more than we were expecting to but we've got some some guys coming in that should be able to uh perform and and play and hopefully somebody develops and as another breakout year like we've seen the last couple of years, you know, leading two two years in a row with the uh, nation's leading goal scorer. Um, Fantelli does come to tie Poland, but Poland led the country for most of the year in goals scored and was the first one to hit 30 this year, so he's still, you know, he did it first. Um, but we'll see who can kind of be that Jason Poland, Ethan Frank player this year for Western and if they can make some more noise and really see what the NCHC, how it's going to shape up. You know, there's discussion. It won't be this year, but there's talks that ASU could be coming in and they could become a four-year or a, a nine-team conference. So, I mean, there's a lot to see, and we'll continue to see how it develops and changes and add to what we can do, you know? Yeah, maybe uh, Colangelo will come in and, and dominate or uh... – Luke will 
have a an even better year and breakout year for himself. Hey, hey, you know, those two players, they could get on a roll and they could be the tana, a tandem much like McAllister and Poland were last year or Ethan Frank and Drew Orad were the year before that because both times that a player's led the country in goals, they've had a really good center with them too. And, you know, Luke's a, Luke's a solid center and, and makes some great plays on off the draw. And we saw that, well, we saw the replay of that against Minnesota Duluth because we didn't actually get to see the real play because they wouldn't stop showing the replay of a Duluth goal. But, you know, I mean, right off the rip, wins the, the face off and gets behind the defense and buries one. So he's got the hands, he's got the skills, and he, he wins draws and gets his team, you know, going in the right direction to start a, a, a possession. So it'll be interesting to see if those two guys end up on the same line and how they gel and cohere in, uh, what the team looks like. I'm excited for it. I can't wait for freaking college hockey to be here already. I know. I I like the summer, but I just kind of wish the hockey season was starting already. I freaking hate the summer. It's hot. There's nothing but allergies. It's not hockey that's, season. That's that's a personal problem for you. You know, give me winter when everything's frozen over and I can breathe and there's hockey. Well, maybe if Canada wouldn't just decide to set itself on fire. that That's the issue. No. Hey, don't flick your butts outside your windows when it's dry outside. Or really ever. Those things can start forest fires. And I swear to God, if that's how this thing started, a dude needs to be in jail for the rest of forever. Thanks, Smokey the Bear. Hey. Sometimes <laughs> that's how forest fires starts. Or, you know, having some stupid gender reveal blowing shit up in gauze and fires like they did in California a couple years ago. Yeah, but if he blew something up... That was literally how one of the forest fires in California oh, started a couple years ago was someone being an idiot and blowing something up to show whether or not their baby had a penis or not. All right? It's stupid. Don't do it. If you're going to blow things up, do it in a gravel pit. Yeah, sure. Yeah, then it... Nothing will start on fire there. Allegedly. Just don't use too much tannerite. It's it's fine. All right. Not, not that I'm an expert or anything. I think we pushed that as far as we could. Uh, I think that was a pretty fun topic to discuss during the off-season. I think we should do this again next year, honestly. It was fun. I think so, too. Um, The draft is tomorrow and Thursday. Yep, tomorrow. He said on, questioningly because he doesn't really know for the NHL. Yeah, it, it's tomorrow on national television, and then Thursday probably NHL Network and wherever you want to find it. But I know the first round is nationally televised. I think it's PMT here again, which I think I, I messaged you. Uh, this last night, I think one of the best things they could have done for the awards was have Biz on there. Because I don't think he looked at the teleprompter once, and he was just himself, and it was phenomenal. Um, Connor Bedard, I kind of want it. He has a very punchable face, and he has zero personality, doesn't want to have fun. And then you have Linus Allmark, who is putting on a bachelorette sash that says Vesna and a, wearing a tiara running around the, the arena. Um, so I think, I think that was one of the, the best things they could have done though, was have biz just kind of be himself and make it entertaining for the fans. Oh, for sure. I think when those guys real personality comes out, it's a hundred percent more enjoyable than it being forced and, and silliness. So, um, that you go away. Uh, but I think that's going to do it. Again, no episode next week. Enjoy the 4th of July. Be careful with those fireworks. Don't start any fires. Whether Don't it's... pull a Jason Pierre Paul and blow your fingers off. Yeah, keep all 10 digits. Well, all the digis are needed. Um, unless you're Rhett Kingston, who you know is scoring goals with only eight digis. But 
you know, not everyone's that talented. So just to keep them all if you got them. Keep what you got. Don't try and lose any. Uh, other than that, I think there's just one thing left to say. Pucks on net, good things happen. The Gold Horns and Fight Songs. Until the next episode, which will be July 11th, we're out of here. Enjoy 4th of July. Have fun with your friends and family. We're out. Thank you.